How about Vita Vea? I think that you really got to see how important he was in the conference championship and Super Bowl when he came back from injury. A lot of Bucks fans thought he was just gone for the year. So when he came back, he had a huge impact. And he really was impactful, even though his stats might not necessarily show it. If you watch the tape, you can't deny the value he brought. Like, let's start off with this one. So Tampa Bay ran a lot of stunts in this game, which means that you have someone who doesn't just rush the passer the way you would expect. Usually they run around and go somewhere else. So like on this play, for example, Shaq Barrett, typically the edge rusher is just going to run into the tackle or try to get around the tackle. But instead, Barrett's going to pull all the way over and, you know, go to Mahomes' left and try to get through that way. And so what's interesting about this play is that it's usually for Vita Vea, Kansas City's doubling Vea. I mean, they basically said before the game started, like, hey, let's make sure we keep our eyes on Vea. You got to make sure you find out where 50 is on every play because if you lose him, uh, he'll beat you. So with a right guard and center already maybe looking his way, that's what you would expect. But the issue is that the right guard has to now look over towards Sue or Barrett since there's two guys in that area. So, you know, he'll maybe try to block uh, Vea, but really he has to also keep his eyes on other players and they want to double team Vea. So now the left guard's going to be the one who actually comes over and tries to make this double team just to make sure that 50 doesn't beat them. But when this play starts, you see this means that since Barrett is now running to the right, now the right guard, or to his right, which is our left, now the right guard for Kansas City, he's also going to essentially be blocking Vea, meaning they're essentially having three guys on Vea, which means two one-on-one -on -one matchups with Sue and JPP, and Jack Barrett is completely free. So that just kind of goes to show the respect they had for Vea and how he disrupted things. So watch, uh, everyone else won their matchup, but Barrett was able to get completely free and, you know, Mahomes had to scramble and Levante David made a great play on the back end there. So, so yeah, I mean, when you're getting triple teams, it usually means that teams respect you and that you're doing a pretty good job. And now we'll show this one because really, I mean, Tampa Bay, they were fine with Vea getting double teamed because they're saying, hey, Shaq Barrett, JPP, Sue, uh, yeah, go ahead. Try to block all those guys one on one. You can double team our best defensive linemen because we got three more really good defensive linemen and pretty good depth too. So like on this one, you see Vea is lined up to the defense's left, which is our left, but he's going to run and basically try to, you know, run into a double team with the left guard and center. He's fine with that because now, again, Barrett, JPP, Shaq are all going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups, and Kansas City can't even block those guys for a second. Mahomes takes a snap, and all three of them uh, really get pressure eventually. M Mahomes just sort of scrambling. Does make a move on Vita Vea, who tried his best there. Listen, uh, obviously Vea is not going to be able to uh, you know, bring down Mahomes one-on-one, -on -one, also try to disrupt the pass a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, really good play by him, I thought. This one's a similar concept, and it's worth mentioning, just because the concept is designed for him to get a double team doesn't necessarily mean that he can't also get pressure. Watch, once this play starts, you know, he's running into the double team, but now kind of looks over to his right and says, hey, uh, at this point, you know, there's a bull rush against the left tackle. If I run over there, I can get this immediate pressure and I can keep the containment, which is important. This might have actually been a stunt. It either was a late stunt or this is actually what he's supposed to do uh, or, you know, he just read it. But either way, what you're going to see is really impressive. Watch his speed to run over and still create some, some pressure on Mahomes. I mean, that's incredible speed right there. You know, Scotty Miller said he was the fastest player in the NFL and faster than Tyreek Hill. Little did he know, Vita Vea is actually faster than uh, Tyreek Hill. No, okay, not really. But uh, he's, you know, for his size, it's incredible. I mean, honestly, seeing these defensive linemen who are 300 plus, plus pounds and can still move like that, it's, it's scary, quite frankly. I want to talk about this play now because one guy who's going to have a big impact on this play is Cam Gill. Who is Cam Gill? Well, you probably didn't watch my pass rush video because I talked about him a bit there. But Cam Gill is, you know, he's a, a role player. He's usually just a special teams guy, but he got a couple snaps in the Super Bowl, made the most of one of them. He's going to, again, it's a stunt. He's going to actually go from all the way to the left, all the way to the right, get around a left tackle for Kansas City and try to get through that way. You have Vita Vea, who is currently going to be running straight into the center. And typically what you would want to do is you would want to have somebody block him. And again, because of the way that Gill is lined up, the right guard kind of has to keep an eye on Gill, which means that now the left guard is the one who, you know, the one I've circled in yellow. He's going to probably be keeping an extra eye on Vea. And so he has to learn at a certain point, yes, 
blocking Vea is important, but also you got to look out for a stunt. The issue is just that that's really difficult because it takes all your attention to watch out for Vea. Watch, once this play uh, starts, you notice that Howie's trying to finish off the double team. And typically against the double team, you can kind of keep look, your, look up field and not have to put your entire ten attention on the double team. But Vea is just too good to do that, which is partially why these stunts work so well. And why some, someone like Cam Gill, who, listen, this was a good play. I'm not trying to discredit it. But it also just goes to show, you know, it opens up the door for things like that. As you see, Gill does get completely free. Also, Sue, who was essentially an edge rusher on that play, got some immediate pressure pressure as well. Ball came out and Vea almost, you know, hustled his way back into getting the ball. So there you go. Again, that's one of those plays where it's not necessarily the best play you'll ever see, but it's really more about just the impact he had just by being on the field. And finally, I want to show one more play. Why? Because look where Vea is lined up. He's lined up as an edge rusher. They did this a few times, uh, at least three times, maybe more. Uh, I, it's possible I missed one. But, you know, not a lot. But there were a couple times when they did this, and it kind of made some sense. Because Remmers was really struggling with the bull rush a lot of times. So, hey, how about putting your biggest defensive lineman, who's really good at the bull rush, on him? And also, this gave JPP some opportunities to sort of use his footwork to get around guards, which he actually did on a different play. Watch how you're going to see Vea just get, you know, push Remmers back. Mahomes had to get rid of the ball quickly. Uh, they got a short completion there. It was good coverage by David on the back end as well. But that's just, just kind of fun. Uh, maybe not necessarily, again, this unbelievable play. But it goes to show that, hey, this isn't just some run-stuffing run nose tackle. Uh, he got so much attention in a game that he didn't get on the stat sheet hardly at all. So that just kind of goes to show what kind of impact he was having just by being on the field and how fearful Kansas City was of him. I think in hindsight, it could be argued maybe they should have given other guys the double teams and sort of tried to block Vea one-on-one. -on -one. But I think if they do that, then Vea gets pressure just as quickly as the other guys do. So I think Kansas City was in a lose-lose situation. And the reality is when you don't have a great offensive line because of injuries and you're playing a team that has four really good pass rushers and like I said you know William Goldson was good uh they Tampa Bay really just like to play a 4-3 this game because they were only rushing four so why you know confuse you that much they did a little bit but not that much but it really worked out it was an impressive win. It, I think we were all very happy to see Vea actually get an opportunity to play in the Super Bowl when we didn't think that was going to happen. And now he's a Super Bowl champ. Pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.